Garden of Eden. Hello, I'm Johnny Chiardini, uh, and this is Joe Scrabbles. Hello. You may have seen on the channel before when we ate crisps. Mmm. I taste like meat. We managed to eat crisps and talk about them for an hour. Yeah. And people liked it, which is the stranger thing. Mm -hmm. um, but off the back of that, people were talking about a lot of other foods, including party foods, mm -hmm. um, such that the people of this cursed racist country <laughs> <laughs> enjoy when they are gathering to celebrate something, mm. be it the Queen, a birth, a death. Uh, a, a day that's sunny, but not warm. Yes. Um, these are obviously our main traditions here. So what we've done is we've catered a party just for you and we realise that you can't attend this party um, so we're just going to sample everything and talk about it as we go. There are an intimidating number of pork products. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really a testament to man's affinity with putting a whole pig into a machine that makes it a cube at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Two thirds of more than two thirds of what we're eating today is pig. And most of the rest of it is chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> there are two food groups in, in British parties. Mm. Pork products and sugar. Yeah. Do we need to define the type of party? Because we went to... Yes, we, we went do. went to Iceland. Yep. Oh, well, we technically went to Mega Iceland, which is called the Food Warehouse. And it, you know what? It, it stood up. It, st it stood like... I walked in and I was like, we are in a warehouse, yes. Yeah, full of... Full of frozen foods. It's things that questionably could be called foods. Uh, we're not going to buy Frey Bentos. <laughs> uh, I don't want to buy Frey Bentos, not just because it doesn't really fit the brief, but also because once I ate one and found a bit of spine in it. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, um, and we decided quite early on that what we're catering is the kind of British party where you can imagine everything on a paper plate and also a paper tablecloth. Yeah. Which is why we turn down things like little frozen party food. Like maybe we do uh, a further one that's sort of a cr like a fancier Christmas party where yeah. you've got like little chicken satays yeah. or like hot dogs in batter. Duck spring rolls. Duck spring rolls. Uh, and margies. Yeah. Because this is the thing is you've got kind of in the same way you have a continental breakfast mm. and a hot breakfast. Yeah. There is a cold party platter, and then there's the hot beige platter. Yes. The hot beige platter is, that's a different kind of party. That's yeah. one where people are getting liquored up before the guests have even arrived. That's like, yeah. that's like Nigel's 50th. Yeah, that's where you've got six bottles of Prosecco, yeah. and you have to go out and get more halfway through the party, and someone drives and they shouldn't. Exactly. This is the kind of party where someone's gone, holy shit, I've just seen the sun for the first time in three months. Let's go to Clapham Common, yeah. and I'll bring everything in a rucksack. And crucially, when I empty that rucksack over the ground, nothing will break <laughs> or change shape in any way. Like, um, this is this is survival food, yeah. but for surviving itself, being thrown about by drunk idiots in a park. But this isn't a picnic, either. No. Because I also feel like this would be very at home on someone's kitchen table when basically they were having a house party and they were like, we'll do some food. Yeah. And they haven't been, what they did was they bought all of this and then a multi-pack of Stella. Yeah, they went to the food warehouse that morning. Yeah. <laughs> and went, how much can we get And they called it a party. Oh yeah, all of, this entire spread was £23. Um, yeah. Which, honestly, because we, I that includes like, the plates. Yeah, it does. <laughs> actually, literally does. And some some waffles that I bought just because I wanted them. Mm. They're not part of this. Um, I just wanted to because they make hash brown potato. It's a whole other story. Um, I feel like we've had to justify ourselves a lot, but I think yeah. anyone British watching this knows that you know this party when you see it. Yeah. So I promise there's an idea, but it's like a it's a sort of invisible philosophy that yeah. all people have in this country. It's a social convention. It is. Put onto paper plates. And it's all pork. It is all pork. So where do we begin? I feel like we start with a miniature sausage roll. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to, we're, we're increasing the production values here. Not only do we have a table, mm -hmm. but I'm going to take some B-roll <laughs> so people can see these things up close. Okay. So uh, here we have the humble miniature sausage roll. Um, yeah. As you can see, 
it's a small amount of pork sausage meat encased in uh, some pastry, puff pastry, but made small. Yeah. Um, it's a staple of, of um, parties like this because they're inexpensive, everyone expects them, mm. and everyone will eat at least one. Because at least one being a very key term, because mm -hmm. I'd eat dozens if yeah. I had the opportunity. Well, the thing is, and I, I, I'm already feeling a little bit worried about these, on the outside, oh, actually, on the outside, they kind of feel like a little bit like buns. Like Yeah, it's, it has got a bun. It's element. quite a bready pastry, but... Mm. Oh, hey, what you want to know about the mini sausage roll mm. is that there's never enough sausage in it. No. And this really lives up to that. Bit. Oh, my God. But the reason I normally dread these is that the pastry is normally so dry mm. that it's just like eating sand. So you miss the sausage even more. Because yeah, you've yeah, because it's ripped off all your taste buds and yeah. it's gone down. These are actually quite pleasingly moist and there's a good balance here. So the, the sausage even is bringing enough moisture, even though as you say, there is not anywhere near as much sausage in there as there should be. We're actually living in sort of a golden age for sausage rolls at the moment. You remember about ten years ago when everyone went wild for burgers? Yeah. I feel like that's happening for sausage rolls now. Mm. I'm going into places and seeing sausage rolls that look like works of art. Yeah. A, and also B, again living up to the pork and interest in this country. Yeah. It's like that much pork and then a, a thin layer of like phyllo around the edge and it's like, that's your sausage roll. Yeah. He's kind of amazing. It's a, yeah, it's a fist of pork. It's basically like you put a latex glove on a hand. <coughs> that's the pastry and the hand yes. is, is how much pork you get. And frankly, I'd, I'd eat that too. Yeah. A human hand in a latex glove. <laughs> If it was presented nicely in a Gale's Bakery, I'd have it. See? Yeah. See? I talk about cannibalism a lot on this channel. Oh, yeah. Um, it is weird. It does feel like, possibly because everything in this country is currently shit, it feels like we're having a real renaissance with let's get a pig and use every possible bit of it. Oh, yeah, nose to tail is, is yeah. all the rage. Exactly. Um, and thus we have the humble miniature sausage roll. They're pretty good. They're nice. They're not my favourite. No, they're not going to blow your mind. I mean, I think we should move on to uh, pork product number two. It's humble, it's humble Cousin. This has no pastry in it. It doesn't have lots of pork in it either. No. But this is a cocktail sausage. Well, do you know what I liked about these? Mm -hmm. uh, and here's a little fact for everyone. Um, they are literally called sausages on the packet, which is an actual important legal definition. Really? Uh, because to be called a sausage on a piece of British packaging means that you have to have a certain amount of meat content in there. Ah. So if you see something called a banger, a banger on a package, it, it does not meet the legal requirement for the amount of meat in it. Holy shit! Yeah. So this is called a cocktail sausage. So they've actually got enough pork in them? Yeah. Um, the thing that I find... <laughs> it's like touching a dead thing. Yeah, it's so wet. And I don't know where the wetness comes from. They're just greasy. They're like, not disgusting, aren't they? Like, and the other thing is, have you ever been, <laughs> this is a hyper specific reference. Go on. Have you ever been to um, like either uh, the Horniman Museum yes. or the Victor Wind Museum? I've been to both. Right. You know when you see like <laughs> an old dick in a jar? Yep. Oh yeah. Well, welcome. To medical science. The outside of this is like, you know when you go into a cellar and you touch the cellar wall and it's cold and damp? Yes. Or... Cocktail sausage. Uh, this is actually, this is more warm, but like a bad nightclub where the sweat gets on the walls. Mm. That's the feeling of this cocktail sausage. So, <laughs> just a cross section for those of you at home. Mm. Um, it's fine inside. I don't know what they do to the outside of these things. But they look like a witch's finger. Oh my god. I mean, the thing is... These are so consistent, they they only taste like cocktail sausage, and nothing mm. else in the world tastes like cocktail sausage. You can't get a big cocktail sausage. You cannot. Something changed, it's the size, mm. must be the flavour. <laughs> it's like last night I went for a walk quite late, and there were a bunch of drunk people, so it was a Friday night, queuing up at McDonald's, and I was like, wow, that's a lot of people going to McDonald's. Mm. And I thought to myself, well of course they're going to McDonald's, because they're drunk, they want something to eat, and they know what's in. <laughs> it. They know that McDonald's is consistent. You go in and you know exactly what you are going to get. Mm. You are going to say, I would like a fillet of fish or I would like a, a Big Mac or whatever. Yeah. And you will get it and it will be exactly the same the whole world over. This is why every time I eat at 3 a.m. it's always a Big Mac and three chicken selects. <laughs> because it's a it's an anchor point to what has often been a very turbulent evening. <laughs> like, 
It brings me back to earth mm -hmm. in a way that weighs down my gut and helps me fall asleep. <laughs> you know what you're getting? It's a consistent clammy exterior. Mm -hmm. It's the same taste the whole world over. I just got a little bit of gristle that was actually more like grit. <laughs> and they're so small, you can just inhale them. This right. is the thing. Oh, oh. Everything we're going to describe a bit more grit. is but disgusting, mm -hmm. but I love it all. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There won't be a thing on this table, aside from maybe these, that I don't like. And yet I will make everything sound disgusting to anyone who hasn't had it before. It's because it fundamentally is, but the thing is, we're so used to this, mm -hmm. that it's like, well, it's a, it's a cocktail sauce, you know exactly what you're getting in, you get yourself in for. Yeah. They're the yeah. exact same as they ever have been. And yeah, it's the only food that hasn't changed for probably 300 years. No one's made any attempt to improve the cocktail sauces. God, no. And they could do with improvement. Mm, I'm not yeah. saying they're good. Because the idea is that anyone would go anywhere near these while also drinking a cocktail. Is <laughs> That's a really approach. good point. Why are they called that? You're not gonna... Certainly they're not going in a cocktail. And the idea that a cocktail bar would have these on the side, it would have its license taken away. It's an extremely <laughs> 1970s thing, I feel. Mm. It's like, oh, we're going to have a martini, and have you had one of these darling little cocktail sausages? I, no joke, would eat this entire plate. I can. Yeah. Like, I've been to a house party before where I was standing, I got chatting to someone, as you do, and there was a table of snacks next to us, and it was a really raucous house party. Yeah. Like, people were absolutely hammered. One of the, um, one of the hosts had said to his girlfriend very publicly, you think you're better than everyone else in this room, don't wow. you? She'd stormed out and had a massive argument. And I was talking to this guy. That's funny. Mm. Talking to this guy, very intense conversation. I was locked in. I wasn't necessarily really enjoying it, but my left hand just went to work. Just the devil's hand, <laughs> yeah. the devil's hand said, no, idle hands are the devil's plaything. I ate an entire bowl of cocktail sausages. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I would say... We've got a long way to go, but I'm absolutely nuking me. If, I was, if, I, if these were served next to a supermarket bit of onion and garlic dip, which I have in my house now and I should have brought with me, honestly, it's like, that is, that's a day's worth of calories that I would eat in four minutes. Yep. Because you just like, womp, womp, I'd double hand two sausages at a time, bang, bang, bang. It's peak efficiency. Yeah. I'd look like a concert pianist. <laughs> <laughs> it would be such a beautiful, beautiful idea. I don't know if this will be a shot. No, I'm just going to let Lost and eat one. Go on. Yeah. Yep, enjoy that. And if they're good enough for a dog, <laughs> they must be good enough for a British person. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, we're either going egg or we're going pie now. Look, I feel like sausage roll to cocktail sausage to pork oh, pie right. is a very natural. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. as old as time. Now, a pork pie is compacted pork surrounded by pastry, but yeah. it is not the same thing as a sausage roll. Number one, because there is a lot of pork in this and this is very densely packed. And number two, this is short crust pastry, yeah. I think. You've also missed out the key element. Go on. There's jelly in it. Oh, there is. There is meat jelly. Yeah. Which Sounds and is disgusting. Oh, 100%. But it's so tasty. But Such a naughty little treat. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, these, they, like, pork pies are, like, God is not present in the pork pie. No, God, these things, God turned his eyes away. Like, he, like you know when people have to put a cloth over their face to eat the author? <laughs> <laughs> like, God did that when man made the pork pies, like, just let him have it. It's, let him have his danger. The ridiculous thing about it is that the pork pie is the only product I can think of where I think to myself, I'll just eat the congealed pork. It'll be healthier that mm, way. Yeah. Because the pastry is is unholy. But also, when you look at it, this, this is kind of how I think, you know how like some Americans and some people overseas really like romanticise the British? Mm. And they kind of think we're living somewhere between like Peaky Blinders and Doctor Who. Uh, yeah. Um, when they're like, oh, it's a British pie, like this is what this is. This is this is something you eat before you go kill someone and throw them in the Regent's Canal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it's actually a pie that you eat to kill yourself and throw yourself into the <laughs> Regent's Canal. canal. Um, these are mini ones. These are mini Melton Mowbray pork pies. You can get ones that are about that big. You can get ones that are about that big, but frankly, then you're just showing off. Mate, uh, we're going to talk about a friend's birthday that I went to for a different reason later on. Mm. Um, but at that birthday, it was his 30th, he got a pork pie the size of a birthday cake with a 30 on top, and it was astonishing. That's just incredible. We can show a picture of it now. There you 
go. Hope you enjoyed that. It's grotesque. It's so good, man. The thing is, these are these are undeniably a great drinking food because they soak up everything. Yeah. Like your pride, your booze, <laughs> your sense of self. Um, they are wonderful. But um, this is where we encounter our first issue of etiquette. Mm. Joe, would you please prepare to eat a pork pie? Yeah, I just do that. I just eat it straight down. And See, it's so good. I, for one, cut mine in the middle. You're a chopper. So I like to face... <laughs> Sorry, that sounds there. rude. I definitely no, didn't mean that. I liked it. So I'll show you the cross-section of a pork pie. Because it really is just... Mm. These are these are quite like quality. I will say there's very little jelly in it. Yeah. These oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. The hint of disgust. Yes, <laughs> there we are, there we are. It's just spiderweb jelly. Yeah, it's just congealed fat, basically. Mm. Um, and normally, on a higher quality pork pie, these little air pockets here would be filled with jelly. But as you can see, this is compacted pork meat. You can sort of, you know, it's malleable. Um, but it's just encased in... Really? Grease. It's soft, greasy paste. It's pastry mm. made with lard, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. You know you're cutting through. You know you're cutting through fat, but it's like... The pastry gives you a bit of bite, mm. so your teeth have to sort of work through the layers of it. But then your teeth hit the yielding pork, <laughs> and you're suddenly chewing this up, and it's tasty. The yielding pork. So it's soft it sounds like yield. a consumable in Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the flavour is good, but there is something. I for, I'd forgotten. I haven't eaten a pork pie in a while. There is something about the change in textures as I bite into one that alarms me. Mm. My brain goes, are you sure about this? And I always think, no, and then I carry on. The thing I would say, I'm quite a... Um, pork pie is maybe oh, the most dangerous food for me. Because I genuinely think one of these, not joking, is like 20% of your day's recommended allowance of fat. Yeah. Like this size one. Yeah. And I am so... You know how um, uh, supermarkets always put chocolate bars by the till? Mm-hmm. My version of that is, oh, there's a 10-minute walk from, if that, from Tesco to my house. I could eat a pork pie in that time. Mm -hmm. And I will get one. And... The interesting thing about them is they vary so wildly, whereas cocktail sausages are always the same, and supermarket sausage rolls are always about the same thing. Mm -hmm. A pork pie, <laughs> by any other name, would taste as sweet. <laughs> no, it's um, from Tesco. Yeah. The pastry is incredibly tough. Mm -hmm. uh, from Waitrose, the pastry is much softer like this. Mm -hmm. And then if you get a pork pie from a butcher's, it's like a different food. Mm -hmm. Like, it mm -hmm. tastes completely different. I had one from... A butcher's, actually the same one that that birthday cake came from. I had one from a butcher's in Sheffield called Waterall. If you were ever there, go to the Moor Market in Sheffield, go to Waterall Butchers and get a pork pie. Anna said, as I was walking along, I was silent for 10 minutes because I just ate this pork pie in like a, just a rapture. Wow. Of just like, this is the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. Holy shit. Uh, it was fucking amazing. And like, this is the thing, they are objectively disgusting. Yeah. A good one will flatten you. Yeah. <laughs> like it will, it's a little... In the same way that God turns his eyes, it made me believe it. Oh my God, <laughs> holy fuck. Because they, they do make me feel genuinely ashamed. Mm. I, I don't... I think in the last hundred mini pork pies I've eaten, I have only not regretted, I'm going to say, four of them. Okay. I regret that one. Yeah, that's really that bad as well. Bad. That's particularly bad. It's, and that's what it is. It's a gamble. You don't know whether you're going to enjoy it, but you do know that you're about to inhale a lot of fat and salt. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah, that's always involved. Mm. The, um, yeah, there's a sort of, um, like a pass the parcel energy to them. You unwrap and you're like, well, this one has no salt in it, and it's basically just fat. Yeah. And another one, you're like, well, this was a very happy, well-fed pig. Yes, <laughs> he yeah. He was a good boy. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, there is a question of animal welfare underpinning all of these things. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, all of these pigs, Died terribly. They led... They didn't have names. Yeah. <laughs> None of these pigs had names. No. And I'm sorry for all of them. Mm. But... But this is an honour of a sort. Yes! <laughs> but as we've seen, British people, because... Well, let's face it, we've had two things on which to build our, our sort of uh, cultural foundation. Wheat and pigs. Mm. British, British cuisine loves to riff on, on a classic. We've had... Pork encasing pastry. We've had pork encasing pastry. Yeah. We've had the sausage roll, which 
if you were describing it to an alien, would seem functionally identical to the pork pie. Good point. Now, what happens when it's definitely a pie, but British cuisine is asked to produce another variation mm. to riff on the pork pie? That's where you get the gala pie. Oh my god. <laughs> Which, watch the plate here. This is unholy. It's going to bend. This is. Right. It's heavy. Look at that. The density is. It's. I think we described it earlier as like a neutron star. <laughs> There's nothing. There is no, apart from that crack in the pastry, which is, again, filled with pure meat jelly. Oh, it is, yeah. Now, that is just jelly. Um, to the gills. Apart from that, this is a purely, this is about a kilo. <laughs> it's I'd not say a kilo. So. <laughs> it's not far off. But what you, if you've never seen one of these before, there's a very special secret to the gala pie. I'm going to have to hold it underneath. I'm going to get a video here as well so we can sort of yeah. do a grand reveal. So pastry, pastry, pastry. Obviously this is cut from a much longer pie. Yeah. That's what you need to bear in mind. Long ass pie. The Marleys are dead to begin with. <laughs> this must you bear in mind, else all that follows after it will not seem wondrous. <laughs> you've got pork, as, as Joe mentioned, you've got your jelly there. What's so that? what is this? That. Is it bone? No. Is it marrow? No. What is it, Joe? It's a big long egg. <laughs> Someone put a long egg in a pie and they broke the laws of nature. I think this might constitute uh, Britain's greatest contribution to, to science. I think this might constitute a war, war crime. crime. <laughs> like, it is. This is Nuremberg level fuck up a chicken stuff. <laughs> like, this is not fair. Would you be so good as to cut us a slice of gala pie? Because you can see here. Oh yeah. Egg. This is egg. Egg. And what if we cut directly in the middle? It's like a magic trick. There's an egg with a yolk in the middle. <laughs> but wait. It, what if we were to cut halfway through this slice, Joe? Let's have a check. Still an egg. How is there still an egg in there? They make a gala pie. This is not a wind up. They make a gala pie with a special machine mm. that takes eggs and manages to maintain the separation of yolk and white, but just like make, church and state. Like church and state, yeah. and make it a long egg, like you've seen in the memes. You know, when people like long egg, you're like, ha ha ha, what's an impossible delight. These have existed for years and years and years in this country, and they've been encased in pork. Do you know what that means? Mm. Someone, probably not alive because they were invited, <laughs> involved in making garlic pies, pie, yeah. literally invented the long egg machine. Like, in the same way that, you know, Dyson has, <laughs> has made vacuums better, and other inventors have done things. The yeah. man who made, made reggae reggae sauce, he's an inventor. <laughs> Levi Roots. Levi Roots, that's his name. Uh, someone out there is able to go to a party like this with a paper tablecloth and go, you know what I did? I invented the long neck. Shit. And that's what you're eating right now. Oh my god. And I do think he's dead. And it's definitely a he. <laughs> That's the problem. He invented the, he invented the long egg and thus the gala pie. Of course he's dead. Yeah, he's in hell. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, I think we should halve a slice. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to eat a whole slice of gala pie. So a gala pie thing, I would say, is a party food, but also this belongs more on a cold lunch buffet, I would say. Really? Yeah, I've never been to a party where a gala pie is just there. Sorry, the state of that yolk. Oh, no, it's, oh it is it's grey. It's like chalk. It? Yeah. It looks like you could write on a wall with it. P please, I own this I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's... Oh, that, I mean... It's so pungent. That it smells, smells like, like dog food. food. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, yeah it's, a, it's an animal food. The dog took exception she to loved that. It. Um, Genuinely, you know how earlier I was saying I like everything on I don't actually think I might not like this. Mm. Well, as I was saying, right, I normally expect this to be the thing I take that is like the main bit of my buffet food. So mm. I'll take a bit of coleslaw, a bit of potato salad, some leafy greens, a slice of this, yeah, and that's lunch. That's the whole lunch. Yeah. yeah. At a party where, if I went to a party and just saw a gala pie with slices waiting, I basically I would spend the rest of my evening there. Assuming that at some point it's going to descend into a chemsex orgy, <laughs> the people are just going to start taking class A drugs and banging each other. Honestly, the jelly on this—I can see the 
camera almost through it. Like it's so. Oh my god! It's, yeah. It's refracting light. But it's like the end of annihilation. <laughs> I was going to say it's like um, when they find the mosquito in amber in Jurassic Park. Mm, that too. Yeah. Yeah, you find a tiny big embryo in there. <laughs> Here we go then. Okay. Mm. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, but it is bad. No. Oh. Mm. There's the dread pork pie pastry. That mm. is that is good pork pie pastry. This is. Oh yeah, that is. Oh no, the jelly is actually really bad. <laughs> this is an extremely good example of a gala pie. Mm. <laughs> By which you mean it's a horrible gala pie. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It's just. I swear the yolk colour has changed. Yeah. Like an apple goes brown. <laughs> We've exposed it to the air. Oh. The thing is, right, you get foods with three ingredients, and normally you find some sort of balance or ratio. Mm. There is too much of everything in this. <laughs> yeah. All at the same time, which is which doesn't make sense. Salt, fat, acid, heat. <laughs> <laughs> I am gonna have. I'm gonna eat this. Mm, wow. Mm, oh, look, the egg is so bad. The egg is so bad. The pork springs back a little. Mm, yeah. The oh. pork's almost mechanical. <laughs> like it's been designed for something else. It tastes like corned beef. And I like corned beef. Yeah. But that comes from a cow. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know what corned means in that. Me neither. But this is corned pork. Mm. Mm. No, this is bad. This is actually really bad. Yeah. But I'm always drawn to this because I'm like, that is that is a lot of lots, a lot of pork. Pork meat should be tasty. Mm. Egg should be tasty. There's the pastry. There's the egg. And yet, there's too much of everything in this. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh, that is a disaster. This is a really bad time. I feel upset. <laughs> I will say, not in the business of wasting food. All of the crisps that were featured in the last video did get eaten over the next few days. This is going to be more of a struggle. There are quite a lot of local foxes here, and I actually feel like that wouldn't be terrible for them. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, it wouldn't be great for them either, but... No, it would be bad for anyone that ate it. But that's where it's going. Have you noticed any walls with missing bricks? <laughs> Could probably... I don't think it would rot for two, three... I bet it's got a long half-life, but <laughs> like, that's a... Uh... That's a sturdy... We could bring this exact pie back next year and do an anniversary edition. Yeah, look look at our pie. <laughs> he just turned one. <laughs> Buy him a little baby grow. Well, the good news is... That's probably the worst of it. Yeah, while we're definitely nowhere near the end of the pork products. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nowhere near. Um, this, this we don't have to do that again, and it, things will get better. We have accidentally also segued into the egg section. We have! Where we get further from pork and closer to pure egg. Fuck, you're right. Yeah. Well then. That's the, and that really is the circle of life. Eggs. What came first, eggs or compacted pork? <laughs> right. <laughs> and no one solved that. No, no. Not even Dawkins. That's <laughs> <my opinion. laughs> I was waiting for Neil deGrasse Tyson to do a fucking snub <laughs> tweet yeah. about it. I had muted him on Twitter. I'm just fed up with him. Yeah, no one needs like... wonder taken away. Yeah. Stop pretending that you're making everything better. You're no. not. No, it's rubbish. You can be miserable, Neil. Mm. If that is your real name. There was a tweet about the Incredible Hulk where it was like, Gamma radiation made the Incredible Hulk. In reality, he would have died. Oh, like, really? No, would he, Neil? I think he just is upset that he's not being turned into a superhero called the Grass Titan. <laughs> well, then he should get onto fucking Miyazaki. He should actually, that's a really good point. Now, here we come, and I know that a, a number of you will have been basically staring at one I was, as I was pointing the knife at the camera like a frightening man. <laughs> Listen up. Um, I know a number of you will have been staring at the screen, trying to work out if we did indeed have one of these. Yeah, baby. Uh, this is a Scotch egg, um, which it's just it's like a little hand grenade. These ones have a little you. rattle as they well. They do. They're a toy. Um, some of you may already be aware. Some of you may not know. A Scotch egg is basically <laughs> wait, wait for this. It's going to blow your fucking mind. It's an egg. It's like an entire hard-boiled egg encased in sausage meat and then given a breadcrumb outer and then sort of briefly fried. Yeah. Um, these, wonderful. these 
Yeah. And the thing, this is again, this is again the weird thing. A pork pie, it's pork encased in pastry. It's, it's similar to a sausage roll. Mm. A gala pie is pork encased in pastry and it's fucking hideous. Yeah. Uh, but it's an egg encased in pork as well. This is an egg encased in pork. It's one of my favourite things in the world. That's so good. It's ridiculous. And there are two ways to eat this. You can cut it. Uh, oftentimes if you order one of these in a pub, they'll cut it into quarters. Mm. So you can eat it daintily. But that's because they're scared of the only true way to eat a scotch egg, Watson, get down, <laughs> which is to bite into it like an apple. Yeah. Welcome to the Garden of Eden. Oh my god, oh. I ate the whole egg yeah, in one go. Oh my god. Mm. 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 Yeah, you got to show the egg. Sorry, I ate too much. Oh, very fun. It's the greyest pork in the world as well. Oh, yeah, and I will show you. The dog is being very restrained here, but that is the inside of a scotch egg, and that is, my god. That's a legend eating a scotch egg. They're just great. Like, this nails the ratio. Mm. Turns out, you actually. Like, you look how big that piece of egg is as well versus the garlic pie. Yeah. That goes so much further. Um, also, the pork, what I really like about pork in a Scotch egg, the very specific recipe they must use, it's really peppery. Yeah. Yeah. It's got like a very distinct, different, like it feels like an actual, like a pork mince that they've done something with rather than these, which are like someone got one of those things that crushes cars and put pigs in them. <laughs> like, this, this actually feels like a, a, a food stuff that someone made and then turned into a crazy shape. Well, the difference is England, England, Scotland. Yeah, and Scotland, Scotland get it. Scot Scotland, yeah, understands how to use spice. Mm. True. Even, even if it's just pepper. That's a know? really good point. Like, these are just phenomenal. I'm going to eat the whole thing because I want to eat the whole thing. Also, even more so than pork pies, I, I would say baseline of Scotch egg is always good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apart from like really bad ones, like proper left out and rain ones. Mm. Um, a scotch egg in a pub, like a gastro pub, is genuinely like by itself a delicious meal mm -hmm. because the pork is always fresh. The, if you get one with a runny egg inside and it's hot, oh, it's incredible! Oh my god! And people, people have started like doing proper bougie experiments with them. I had a black pudding one once. Oh, loved it. Oh. and I, actually, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, pe people outside the UK for some reason don't like the idea of eating a sausage made just of blood and fat. But I quite think it's good. Yeah, it's um, great. And um, what else have I had? I've had a chorizo scotch egg mm -hmm. before. Mm. I've oh, had one rolled in crisps. Oh. <laughs> on, on the inside, it was a pickled egg. That's dirt. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. But the thing is, you say it's like a substantial meal. This was actually debated in Parliament. Do you remember? No. Well, I don't know if it was debated in Parliament. Oh. Yes. It was genuinely a topic of conversation in Westminster because when they were easing lockdown restrictions, they said you can only go to a pub and drink if you also have a substantial meal. Which is weird because it's like they'd relegated everybody to being 16 again. Because mm -hmm. in this country, the legal drinking age is 18, but if you are 16 and you're having a meal in a pub, you can also have a drink with it. Weird. Um, so, yeah, people were only able to have a substantial meal. And then there was a genuine scandal as to whether or not a Scotch egg constituted a substantial meal. Because some pubs were just doing Scotch eggs. And then I think it was Michael Gove was like, it's not a substantial meal. And then oh, Michael he doesn't know how to clap. He's awful. Uh, basically, they flip flop. They were like, it's not a substantial meal. They were like, it is a substantial meal. Mm. And at one point, I swear to God, some politician had to come out and be like, well, no, I guess I love a Scotch egg to try and seem like a normal human being again. <laughs> But basically, Scotch eggs, they're amazing. Now, of course, at this point, having gone sausage roll to Melton Mowbray pork pie, Melton Mowbray pork pie to the cursed realm of gala pie, and from the gala pie to the Scotch egg, surely, surely, this country is done with, with encasing egg in pork mm. and calling it a unique and delicious treat. Yeah. Wrong! What? Be right back. <laughs> because... Not only is there a scotch egg, but, um, well, I mean... The scotch egg's pygmy cousin. <laughs> this <clears throat> is a plate of 
picnic eggs or party eggs, depending on who you talk to. Now, if we're talking about uh, a party where everyone's going to have chem sex, party eggs is 100% the drug of choice. Oh, my God, yeah. It's like, do you want another line? No, I'll have another party I'll egg. I'll have a party egg. So, we just need to cut one of these in half. Would you be so bold? Allow me. Because these look almost like chicken poppers, but what is it? No, it's a scotch egg. But what they've done is, in order to fit the egg in, they've minced it. Yep. Is it egg mayonnaise? I think it must be, yeah. yeah. So basically, your party egg is just a smaller, slightly diced version of a scotch egg. But um, it has a completely different texture. Yeah. And these things you do not cut in half. We cut them in half for illustrative purposes, obviously. Mm. But the real way to eat them is just to pop an entire one in your mouth. Mm. The fun thing about these ones is that, like, like tennis balls, they're slightly pressurised. When you back into me, yeah, uh, oh. I do think they're considerably worse than Scotch eggs. Fuck me, those are horrible. <laughs> you normally can't fuck them up that bad, but for a second, it, that tasted how the sea smells. It tastes like a fart. No, yeah. it's like a little egg just done a tramp in my mouth. Mm. <laughs> it's alright. These guys are fun. You can eat 15 of them without blinking. Yeah, if they don't taste like that. Yeah, but you, you do, you are rolling the dice a lot more because there's the question of egg to pork ratio, quality of ingredients. These, for example, are fucking dreadful. Mm. I normally never turn these down, but I'm not eating another one of those. Yeah. These are dire. But normally, they're, they're a fun little treat. They're like, they're great if you want a scotch egg, but you also want to eat nine of something. <laughs> yeah. Because you can just get a little box of them and just mwah, 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 mwah. I never go for that. I never go for them over a scotch egg. But no. I'm glad they exist. If I see them at a party, I will absolutely walk past and just pop, 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 pop. And that's it, yeah. If you ate nine scotch eggs, you'd, you'd drown in the bath. Like, you wouldn't be able to get out. <laughs> you'd just be stuck in it. You wouldn't even be in the bath when you finished the ninth. You would just be teleported into one and die. Or, yeah, or you'd just somehow slip down the plug hole and live the rest of your life as a sort of mutant. I don't think it would work out well for you. If you no, but it would be just. It, it would. You'd deserve it. That's, what, that's probably what happened to the long egg man who made the gala pie. Good point. Yeah, he took a night off from his gala party, had a had nice scotch eggs and flew down the sewers. Uh, I was really excited, I was really, this was the bit I was most excited about really, was to go, bang, look, there, you can have a scotch egg but tiny, and they're mm. amazing. But that was so fucking awful. Mm. That That's a real letdown. Yeah. I mean, I was about to say it's so awful I'm almost ashamed. I'm already ashamed. Yes. This is a shameful spread. Yeah, this is sort of an exorcism. Yeah. For the country. It's just, I kind of feel like, flash forward two years from now, we're going to be running something called like the anti-tourism board of, of the UK, <laughs> where we just show you things and say, don't come here. Look what we did. We didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Which brings us majestically to the quiche Lorraine. Now, a quiche is, is mostly egg. Uh, it's also pastry and it's also pork. Mm. Kel surprise. A quiche is... It's basically sh short crust pastry again. Yeah. With lots of scrambled egg um, that is thrown into the, the pastry with some ingredients. Like you can get tomato, cheese and tomato ones, or this is cheese and bacon. So sort of throw in a bunch of cooked bacon and then cheese on top and you bake it. Um, and it's kind of, it's not a pizza, nor is it a pie, nor is it a pizza pie. It's, a, it's just egg. Egg. <laughs> like, I love that somehow, Quiche Lorraine is so obviously a French term. Yeah. But if you see, if you say... Do you want some water? If you there? say water... Do you want some water? I think she's hungry, but mm. I'm give her some water. So, quiche, um, it's basically a... It's, it's a... It's an egg pie. It's a wanker's pie, basically. Like, I... I, I think quiche is a, is a food for dickheads. I also... I, like, I also think it's quite tasty, which is annoying. Mm. But um, I'm actually going to... Um, Bring in guest star Watson here, not only because she's been sharking for pork products, but because I, the the best thing, come on, up here, up here, come on, up, 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 and wait. Okay. Yes. There was one time when Watson was a puppy, a friend was having a birthday party in a park, and we ended up having a bit of a picnic. And a friend of ours brought a quiche, mm -hmm. and people had had a slice of the quiche, but there was still a lot of quiche remaining, and a lot of other foods. Watson, as I say, was a puppy at the time, uh, and she was overexcited. She was running around like, like, like crazy, we were throwing a ball for her, she was having a great day. 
And then at one point she ran off quite far. And then she ran through the middle of the circle of friends, through the picnic. Yeah. And she ran through the quiche to the point where she kicked up flecks of egg, like a horse running on a beach. <laughs> And it's threw... like a Lloyd's TSP advert. <laughs> exactly. She threw egg all over the poor woman who brought the quiche. Who just went like, Ugh! And the first reaction was like, I'm being spattered with egg. And then the second reaction was just, well, a quiche. <laughs> and it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Because yeah. I just, again, the quiche, it's like, if it's, if it's at a party, I'll have some. Mm. I'll uh, happily eat some quiche. But it is a shameful... It's just like when I think about the British Empire. Like, there's no pride in it. It's just sort of shame and a, a realisation that it happened is very prevalent. And yeah. I can't take that back. It's also... It's the most... Um, it's the most churchy food I can think of. Oh, my God, yes. As a, as a, a youthful churchgoer, it feels like if you're going to, like, the most... Dull post church bake sale. Yeah. Quiche, there's going to be eight quiches there. And yeah. they'll all be basically the same. Yeah. And everyone will say they've got their own perfect recipe and it's all going to be the same. All thing. the same. These quiches okay. are up there with cocktail sausages as being the same the world over. I say the world over, the country the over. The country over, yeah. Sensibly, other countries haven't taken to these. Spanish tortilla, delicious. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Spanish tortilla is like, is a quiche done right yeah that's someone worked it out yeah this is like someone got halfway through the experiment and went go in pub <laughs> like who gives a shit go in pub right so we're gonna have a small sliver of a key yeah, slice a small bit each i'm gonna put the dog down because you've you're just gonna run through it <laughs> yeah oh, that, is, that is a small enough piece very of gem. <laughs> oh no i'm not gonna touch a quiche and hand it to you that'll be mad oh i mean i tell you what though what i like about particularly these ones with the bacon the egg doesn't smell like evil egg, like no. gala egg. Like, it smells like a bacon-y egg. Like, yeah. it has actually been cooked as one thing. Yeah. Which is good. A cheese in there. It's got a very soft texture. It's very creamy. This is actually quite it's good. good. Yeah. You can say what you want about a quiche. We've said a lot. Uh-huh. But it's not bad. Yeah, no, they're good. It'll fill you up. Mm. It's a vehicle for bacon and cheese. I could eat more of that. Yeah, it's easy. easy. Mm. That's staying. That goes in the fridge. Yeah. Go eat that one. Yeah, that's our lunch. Mm. Mm. Is there anything? This is so we've got through all the savoury parts of our party. Oh, the part one. What have we missed? Quavers. <gasps> yeah. But carry on. What were we gonna say? I was going to say, is there anything from our party that you think has been missing? Do you think there's an, uh, is there an archetypal, and I would love to hear this in the comments, mm. is there an archetypal piece of a party that you don't see on this table that isn't Christmassy oven food? Because that's a different deal. It's a different deal. Frankly, no. I, I, what so? I feel like we've got all the bases covered because if you did introduce a potato salad or a coleslaw, suddenly it's a buffet and that's yeah. a different thing. Yes. This agreed. is a come, pick it up, carry on talking to somebody, go have another gin and tonic kind of spread. Again, actually this doesn't, this kind of applies to the, the oven food as well, but I think we've missed a key distinction. Hmm. You don't need cutlery for any of this. Ah, no. Cutlery, I think, would, would deem it a different kind of a, a meal. Yeah. The Apart quiche, from cutting stuff, that's fine. Yeah, the quiche would be pre-sliced. The garlic pie would be... The no, no one wants to slice the garlic pie. You might just throw it at a wall and pick yeah. up what, what's left if yeah. you're the kind of person who wants it. Do you know what I think's missing? Go on. A tinfoil sofa. Because uh, I want to tell a story. Um, it's only yeah. a short story, but it's a good one, I think, mm. about my friend's uh, parents went to a party once. And it was this kind of a party. Right. Right? All finger food. Except they came back and they were like, we saw the weirdest thing. These people had made what looked like a sofa out of tinfoil <laughs> and then draped ham over the back of it. <laughs> and that was the delivery <coughs> method. So you would, so if you wanted a bit of ham, and it wasn't to go on a sandwich or anything, it was just, do you want a bit of lunch meat and pick it up, walk away with it. 
And so it was just a little sofa with a bit of ham. Like how old people have like those semi like circular it's, it's, like doily things yeah, so that it was kinda of like a clothes horse for ham <laughs> made of tinfoil. <laughs> and he told us this once. When this was when we were living at uni, and it stuck with us for years. We were like, yeah. tinfoil ham sofa. Like, what an amazing idea, what a crazy delivery method. And so, for years we talked about it and talked about it and talked about it, and particularly one of our friends, Jamie, got really into the idea of it. He would talk about it a lot. And so for his 30th, where he had the uh, massive birthday cake pork pie, we made him a tinfoil ham sofa. And, mate, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think it's one of my proudest artistic oh, achievements. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Right, so we made this. That is a, that is undeniably a sofa. It will be on screen. Um, so we made cushions, individual yeah, tinfoil cushions. That's fucking huge. This is me draping ham over it. Fucking amazing. Uh, and then um, here it is draped. <laughs> and what we did, <gasps> what we did that unfortunately I feel quite bad about. We hid bits of chorizo under the cushions, <laughs> as like if anyone wants to come and take it apart, they'd find a little treat. <laughs> But then we realised, I don't think anyone found them, and we may have just left it there, so that treats have probably went real bad, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was grim. Oh no. Oh, I've got a video. What? Oh my god. Oh, it's just me draping. And loving it. Look how much, look oh, how enjoyable I'm finding draping, scam. draping the ham. I mean, it's incredible. What uh, a triumph. It was real good. So that is one thing we've missed, but also... I think I've only ever seen one of these in my more than three decades on the earth, mm. is a cheese and pineapple hedgehog. Oh, yeah. So a cheese and pineapple hedgehog is when you get a potato, a raw potato, mm. my god you can tell we went through rationing in the last <laughs> few years. <laughs> You get a potato, you wrap it in tin foil. You then get a bunch of cocktail sticks and you put a cube of cheese and a cube of pineapple on it and then you stick, like you skewer that and then you stick it in the back of the potato. So you get these bristles and it's like a hedgehog, but you just pull them off and you go ning, ning, ning. So you wait, you're specifically just saying cheese and pineapple. Well, you can, you can also put a silver skin and pickled onion on it. Oh, I can mean, put a little bit of ham on it, like a little cube of ham. Oh! Yeah, like a gammon bit. Like a gala pie. No, <laughs> not like a gala pie. Oh. Uh, no, I've never, well, I've never seen that. I've only ever seen the cheese and pineapple hedgehog. Um, but I've seen one, and I also don't really like pineapple that much. So, like, they've never really held any mystique for me. And mm. while they are, again, another, uh, like, another party food that A, makes you feel a little bit sad that this is where we live. <laughs> um, but B, like, it's another one where you don't need cutlery. Yes. You just pick it up and just, not. Yeah. And you, you know, you don't know where to put the sticks, so you put it in your pocket, and later on you, you just accidentally stab yourself in the hand. I wonder if half of this is just about still being able to hold a pint while you eat. Probably. That's probably a big problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But one more savoury item. A quaver. I circled back around because during the crisp video, we could only find salt and vinegar quavers which tasted like meat yeah. that had been left in the sun. God. So I thought we owe it to ourselves. Functionally, there's no difference for you watching at home apart from we're going to say nicer words and the bag is yellow, but cheese quavers. They're also, as you pointed out, they are exactly the kind of crisp you would find on a paper plate oh at God. this kind of party. Oh my, yeah, I mean, let's... Oh, they do smell good. They do. Because they are good. Yeah. They're basic, but... There it is. Pungent as fuck. It's a very mild, inoffensive, but also clearly developed and allowed cheese taste. I think that's actually... I genuinely think Quavers, unlike most crisps, I think they've got better since I was a kid. Mm. They've got more bite. I think they used to be softer. But well, they contain whey powder. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Oh, yes, please, MSG. Milk mm. powder, cheese powder from milk. They've got... They've got different... There are several different cheese flavourings in this. No wonder they're a triumph. No, also... Wait a second. Oh! He's oh my in. God. Oh, my God. That worked pretty well. It looks like a tiny hot dog. Ah, oh, the owl and the pussycat. <laughs> And to see the beautiful quaver boat. No, oh, fuck you, Transformers snack. This is where it's at. That. Yeah? Sensational. I mean, I kind of feel like I'm done with eating pork products. Mm. I was vegan at the start of, <laughs> start of last year. Did five months of veganism and loved it. Now look at me. Mm -hmm. Oh, broke oh, it. I'm sorry. How many, how many tries until I get banned from the academy? Here we go. <laughs> the academy. The academy of 
Oh, fuck. Flavor sausage. Uh, you're just, I had that and then. You're angry with them. Don't be angry. Love the That's love the quaver. It's got to be this one. It's this one or that. I can get you one. It, this is it, mate. Look, I've got, I've got here. No, I haven't. Those are too tight. <laughs> you never do. I can't get my heart. Oh, God. This is actually more. Ah, uh, here we go. That's oh, there we go. Easy, easy mode. Good. It's like putting the. Ah, oh, yeah. It's like putting the uh, the bumpers up on your bowling. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. It's not actually bad. Mm. There's an amazing sandwich shop called Max's Sandwiches. Mm. And Max does a, uh, lives by a creed that all sandwiches should have a bit of crunch in them. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why. <laughs> because he wants to put a sausage in a clay. No, no, no. My friend, He's a Michelin star chef. He probably understands things more than I, I I'd say so. Um, my friend went to uh, Max's and had some chicken wings. Ooh. He's eaten so many chicken wings in his life. He says they're the best chicken wings he's ever had. Really? Yeah. He, what does he coat them with? Oh, um, the crispy coating, smash. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. That is nice. Right. Dessert. Dessert. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so, um, start here, go through here, end on that? Yes, please. Okay, great. <coughs> Everybody, we'd like to introduce you to a Cadbury's Mini Roll. Mm. It's just, these are so easy because they come in packs of 10, you can just throw them on a plate, everyone, again, you know exactly what you're getting. May I suggest we have one? Because I do not want a whole many. Yeah, that's fair. Great. Um, these are the, like, for some reason I think of these as the king of school discos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this is, you've had a bit of orange squash, mm -hmm. and then you have a little chocolate coated treat. So these are chocolate coated Swiss rolls, basically. One if I just Oh yeah, do it, it, please. Mm. Oh, it's got cream oh, in it. Oh yeah, with a slightly creamy sort of. It is kind of a Twinkie cream, isn't it? It like is that, a bit. Like, will survive any event, weather event. Yeah, this is, yeah. They're real good. That takes me immediately back to the childhood. Mm -hmm. Very mild chocolate flavour from the sponge. Quite a thick chocolate. In a quite very dry, pleasing dry. way. Oh, they are dry. That's why the cream's in there. Yeah, I forgot about that. Is that it? You're finished. I'm done with that. I like them. I'm sad to hear that. I'm going to feel sick if I eat all that. <laughs> they said after willfully hawking down pie. a slice of garlic pie, oh. a scotch egg, a pork pie, a half a dozen. No, or more. Mm, you're much more. Yeah. I just... Hello. I just don't want half a mini roll right now. Right. Let's What's have that? something I genuinely don't like. Okay, yeah. Ice gems. Ice gems were a staple of my childhood. I used to get sent to school with a pack of these. Did you? To eat during break time oh, every day. I hate them so much. They, make me, they give me goosebumps. They are... bad. Like, I freely admit that. They, these are... basically... Sugar icing that has been left to go hard, hence mm. the, the, the sort of gem aspect. On a terrible biscuit. On a terrible, slightly sweet biscuit. I have a, I have a real problem with chalk textures and velvet te like anything like slightly off texture wise for me. Like I will get goosebumps. I haven't got them yet, but I reckon I'll I reckon I'll get goosebumps eating. Got these. Yeah. I hate them. Oh, no, just they're bite so into dry. It. It's so gross. They're so dry and so brittle. Like, because the, the icing breaks apart, the the biscuit isn't, isn't, has no moisture to it whatsoever. And then as you chew, you just get the grit of the really fine sugar that's coming into the icing. so crunchy. <laughs> Gross. And they're gone. They're immediate. Like, then they're, they're melting the mouth in a really horrible way. It's also like fruit flavoured icing, yeah. which is grim. I just hate them so much. I never understood why people liked ice creams. I don't remember why either. Hang on, I need one more, because what I used to do... I used to... Bite the icing off and eat that. The noise of that crunch. It is actually really disturbing how fine the sugar is in this. Mm. It's like caster sugar, isn't it? Um, or even finer, I think it might just be icing sugar. Mm. But... Oh, yeah, that makes sense. It goes from <laughs> being very brittle and very a very big texture, suddenly it's gone. Yeah, it just dissipates. It's like, it's like sherbet. Mm. I was going to say it's like in, in a film where the detectives try and bust the guy but he's one step ahead and he's just left the building, like you just missed him. Oh, like when some when a train goes past and the person disappears behind it. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Sean Connery in Entrapment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are a shit tier biscuit. These aren't much better. No, they aren't. But Fox's party rings. Party rings are an absolute staple. These, unfortunately, all we could get were Fox's 
party ring minis, mm. but all you have to do is imagine them being a bit bigger. Um, or imagine my hand is much, much larger. Much, much, yeah. Basically, these are, it's the same deal. They're very similar. It's a biscuit, it's sugary icing on top that's been left to go hard. Um, but these were such a staple at everyone's parties when they were a child that we've been conned into thinking they're good. And they are. That is the same thing. The biscuit's slightly better. Yeah. It's more like a rich tea. Yeah, and the icing is spread out mm. in a way that makes it less offensive. Mm. I'm, I'm not going to eat the rest of that. Not good. They're, no, no, they're bad. No, thank you. However, we are going to end on a bona fide treat. You know what I've just realised again? Well, it's got fish. Of course, yeah. <sighs> England's a shit. Yeah. <laughs> just is. Um, Tanex is a brand that makes two things. Well, it probably makes more than two things, but it makes two things for which I know them. Mm. Um, the Tanex tea cake, which is a biscuit, biscuity base with a marshmallowy kind of top, yeah. and a case in chocolate. A little bit of jam. Is there a little bit a of jam, little jam in, there? in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like a wagon wheel. Yeah, they're nice. They're not my favourite. These are my favourite. Oh my god. The Tanex caramel wafer is basically just lots of. More than 7 million of these biscuits are made and sold every week, apparently. I would not deny it. It is a milk chocolate caramel wafer biscuit, and the wafer the, the wafer levels are literally wafer thin. They're very, very thin, and the caramel between them is like so, so thick. They're beautiful. In terms of consistency, not in yeah, terms yeah, of Yeah, 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 it's real, yeah, it's real chilly. Like, I, I would say that this is, this country's, uh, is, is the UK's answer to a street waffle. Yes, even yeah. though they're covered in chocolate, they're kind of the amount of sugary gooey to wafer is Look at with it. Hard to crack. Oh, oh. it does snap, doesn't it? Let oh, me get it smells so good. Let me get my bow roll. How many wafers are in there? I'm in love with these guys. This this was uh, in my real. Uh, I'm a teenager and I don't understand how to eat phase. Mm -hmm. I would occasionally. <laughs> This is not going to paint me in a good light. Uh, but I don't feel like I'm in a good light in this video anyway. Um, nothing in this no. video is in a good light. I would occasionally come home from school, pour out an entire can of uh, ambrosia custard, put raisins in it, and then use one of these as a spoon. <laughs> I'd just be scooping out this like cold, beautiful, sweet mixture. And then at the end you get to eat the spoon. Oh, that is... They are phenomenal. Heinous. I tell you what's also good is if you bite off either end, you mm. tend to eat half of it so you've got a short one, but stick one end in tea mm. and suck tea up into all of the little voids and then eat it. It's With an Australian family that's known as the Tim Tam Challenge. Yeah. Oh, Tim Tam Tim Tam Tam yeah. Challenge, yeah. Um, it's just, it's it's so good. There's a good amount of caramel in there, but not too, not too much caramel in there. There's enough wafer in there for like a, a, a decent sized mass, mm. I would say. Um, and then the chocolate's not overbearing. This this is how you do correct ratios with three ingredients. Mm -hmm. And if you're alone, and I'm not, you can bite it horizontally and take off each bit of wafer, and then bite all the cat like scrape all the caramel off with your teeth, like a pervert, and just do that all the way down until it's gone. That's honestly terrifying. It's so good. I want to do it now, but I'm not going to because I won't have that out there. Yeah. No, I don't want it out there. <laughs> Especially not, you know, along with something that I put my name to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's fair. All right, well, I feel slightly sick. Mm -hmm. But we have been nailing these. <laughs> if, if I'd consumed that much food over the course of several hours, mm -hmm. while also making small talk, with an aunt or some people I just met on my in my first year of university, mm. I'd think, what a delight, God save the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Under the microscope, it's made me realise we are a broken cursed. people. We were, we were, you said it actually when we were on the way back from the food warehouse, um, that the crisp video made us seem like a fun and interesting country mm. with lots of like fun little potato products. 
thoughtful, interesting, yeah. inventive. This is what shows us for who we really are. This is the real country. This is the this is why people get called gammon in this country. Yeah. This is the food equivalent of going through a Tory MP's voting record mm. and seeing just how deep their their hatred for poor people goes. And for, the only problem is that we have enjoyed most of it, is that, and we, we'd struggle with that. People do keep voting for the Conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. No, we, the thing is we have. So, like, right, things we haven't enjoyed. Gala pie. Definitely not. Because it's cursed. It is. It has always been cursed. We bought it because we felt we had to show it. Yeah, it's like, it's a... It's a, it's a freak show. Yeah. It's like, it's going and seeing something. It's, it's rubbernecking. <laughs> it's, this is looking out of your car to see if you can see the man with his legs bent his back. Yeah. It's, <laughs> that is the due diligence portion of, of this video. Mm. The picnic eggs I bought and was excited about because they're normally one of my favourite bits. I let down. Absolutely awful. Um, I would say the pork pie, the cocktail sausages and the sausage roll all delivered exactly what we thought they would. The scotch egg was a fucking delight because the so scotch egg is always a delight. Quavers are great when they don't taste like meat. Yeah. Mini rolls are, are wonderful. Party rings and ice jams can fuck off. And tunnocks, caramel, wafer biscuits are absolutely stunning. You've missed out quiche. Oh, and the quiche. The quiche was also there. Quiche was... I thought the quiche was very good. It was good. It was. It, I, f I forget that, like, as much as I deride it for being a wanker's pie or a knobhead's pizza, uh, pizza it's really tasty. You have also done exactly what we were saying about the quiche, which is, it just exists. It might as well not be there. Yeah. When you eat it, you're like, eh, right. Occasionally a dog will run through it. Hey. Or occasionally a dog will pop up. And sniff all the food just, and go, you know what, actually, this isn't for me. You know what, <laughs> you've been so good. She we've, has. we've eaten so much pork over the last three days. How long have we been here? I just can't remember. Too long. That felt like a day by itself. Oh, God. Fucking hell. Every bite. It was like 127 hours. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I'm never, I'm never having garlic pie again, I'd, I'd like to say. I Actually, that's a really good point. I'm going to put it out there now. I'm not touching one of those for the rest of my, my life. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I'll probably eat more quiche than I was planning to otherwise. So, okay, well, I guess last time we were like, if you're taking one thing home with you today, mm. what, what are you going for? Scotch egg. Scotch egg. Like, these aren't just self-evidently good. Yeah. But if you're looking for something that is quintessentially and strange, yeah. strangely British. Mm. It's got this scotch egg. Scotch egg is an actual good thing. It yeah. sounds disgusting, and yeah. it was made by a maniac, but it is good <laughs> It food. is good. It's, it is just good. Um, you know what, because it's a party and there's lots of leftovers and I'm being asked if I don't want to take something, mm -hmm. and because I can buy scotch eggs whenever I want. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. Even though I forgot it existed, that's, right. You're going for it. Right. Fair. I'm even going to have a tiny little... No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, but I want it. Oh, God. This is the problem with the party. This is the problem with British party food as well. You're like, this is, this is horrible. I feel sick. I feel embarrassed. But I'm going to keep going. Just so I don't have to talk to my aunt anymore. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Well, this has been a bit... Oh, God. Yeah, no, I'm doing it. This has been a video about British party foods. Um, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I think. But thank you for watching it. Um, mm. Uh, if you want to see more things on the channel, including us talking about crisps for a whole hour, you can do that. There's lots of stuff uh, on the channel. Joe, where can people find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter at 2 plus 2 is Joe, and I write for IGN. Mm. And I make a podcast called Regular Features. They're all enjoyable. Mm. Some more than others. Shout my out. Twitter feeds. Shut. <laughs> oh, I enjoy it. Shout out to the guy who said he was unsubscribing and he wished only the worst things for this channel because I'd shown who I was in bed with by having somebody from IGN on. So oh, that's, yeah! It's all about crisps. Um, if you're still watching, you're a coward, fuck you. Um, but anyway, I have a Patreon, now that I directly tell someone to fuck off. Mm. Uh, it's patreon.com forward slash Johnny Chiedini. But um, really, most importantly, we'll say thank you very much for watching. Uh, let us know what you'd be taking home from this party, and what we missed. Um, yeah. And we'll see you again, probably. So... <coughs> really? Sorry. Sorry. Well, there won't be a girl at pie. <laughs> Goodbye! Bye! That was a lot of fun, but that was harder than the last time. It was. Oh my god. <laughs>